This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Friday, December 13. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. Barbados' ambassador to CARICOM, David Comisiong, says he is satisfied that correct procedure is now being followed in the proposed Hyatt-centric project on Bay Street. Comisiong had mounted a legal challenge against the manner in which building permission was granted to developers, but he told Barbados Today his judicial review of the 2017 decision by former Prime Minister Frendel Stewart to grant approval without conducting an environmental impact assessment is now a moot point. The process is only um, useful if the people make use of it. So it is the duty now of the Barbadian people to go to the public library um, or to well. access the report of the EIA online, to read it, to analyze it, to determine for themselves whether the correct studies were, 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 were uh, required whether um, the studies were done in a serious and, and rigorous manner. A team from the United Nations is expected in Barbados early next year to assess preparations for the hosting of the 15th UN Conference on Trade and Development. In that regard, Coordinator for Accommodation and Hospitality, Cicely Walcott, is encouraging hoteliers to get their houses in order to ensure rooms are available. Except for a small number of self-contained fa facilities for staff who will arrive as early as the end of September, we are looking for rooms at hotels which could include possibly a breakfast rate, but however, that's not essential. Quite a number of properties are all-inclusive, which will put the price point in a higher bracket. We would wish to see if there can be some accommodation during that period to have rates adjusted. As you know, one of the largest groups of hotels on the island is or has been acquired by the Marriott Hotels. So we will be engaging the new management to see what is possible because we really cannot lose those rooms if we want to accommodate the number of delegates that we are anticipating. And we also hope that any refurbishment they are planning for those properties will be either put back until after the conference or certainly be completed before October. The National Council on Substance Abuse is stepping up efforts to deal with the issue of substance abuse and violence among young girls. Manager of the NCSA, Betty Hunt, says they have, they have seen an increase in cases involving girls, particularly over the past three years. She was speaking on the March Against Violence this week, organized by students of the Frederick Smith Secondary School. Primarily, and I think we said from about 2016, that what we were beginning to see is a rise in, we were beginning to be concerned about girls, and the whole issue of substance abuse, the whole issue of violence. So to see the progression today and the concern that has been expressed, I can't really say it's surprising. I think what we at the ACSA have started to do is infuse gender in our programming, because girls need a different response than, than boys do. In terms of how substance abuse impacts, we find that the research shows that children are using substances at younger and younger ages and so we have to have age appropriate programs. There's nothing now to hide under um, a rug anymore. Substance abuse affects everybody. It does not have a face any longer and so we really have to tailor our interventions and go back to that. We have to put in work and do what is necessary. It, it is no longer a one-size-fits-all approach. Hunt also pointed to a link between substance abuse and violence. There's no causation as to say if you use substances it will cause this or your violence is because of that, but there's a clear correlation. And from research that was published recently, we see that persons who um, find themselves in problems with the criminal justice system, a large percentage of them have indicated that they have used substances, in fact have been impacted by substances somewhere along the way. So there's a definite correlation. What we are planning to do at the National Council on Substance Abuse is to do a primary school survey in January. So we will go in and we will not only ask about substance abuse, but we will look at other dynamics like bullying, family, um, violence, stuff like that. And then we can really begin to put our finger on some of the root causes of substance abuse and other, some other issues that we are finding in schools. 
Barbados' sugar industry could get a boost from moves by the Sugar Association of the Caribbean to get protection for regional sugar producers. Chairman of the SAC, Carl James, says the Caribbean market is being undermined by the importation of sugar from outside of the region. And the association is now making a case at the Council for Trade and Economic Development. The Caribbean, with a sugar industry, is the only one in the whole world that allows sugar to come in from outside without any protection. It's the only one. You cannot send sugar into Europe outside the quota without paying, what, 150? 300. 300 euros yeah. per ton duty if you don't have a quota. United States, you don't allow it either. We are the only one in the sugar world that is doing that. There's regional and international news after this short break. Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume revelers, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. A group of Eastern Caribbean indigenous banks has entered into an agreement to purchase all banking operations of the Royal Bank of Canada in the Eastern Caribbean. The group did not disclose the terms of the financial transaction, but said it is subject to regulatory approval and other customary closing conditions. It is expected to be finalized in the coming months. The five financial entities participating in the sale are First National Bank of St. Lucia, Antigua Commercial Bank Limited, National Bank of Dominica Limited, the Bank of Montserrat Limited, and Bank of Nevis Limited. Head of Caribbean Banking at the RBC, Rob Johnson, says the consortium presented their proposal earlier this year, and RBC believes it is a good decision for the long-term future of the success of RBC Caribbean. On the international scene, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Conservative Party was set for a resounding victory in Britain's election, allowing him to deliver Brexit on January 31 in what would be the country's most significant geopolitical move in 70 years. We get more in this Reuters report. This is an outright victory for the Conservatives around what, for many voters, was a single-issue election. Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. So this is the get Brexit done. Get Brexit done, the campaign slogan of Boris Johnson. Labor, though, appears to have miscalculated. Corbyn's platform attempted to energize the most left wing of his party with promises to tax the rich, nationalize certain industries such as telecoms, and even provide free internet. On Brexit, he simply promised to remain neutral if the country moved toward another referendum. The smaller Liberal Democrats party, which did openly campaign to stop Brexit from happening, also looks to have failed, down to 13 seats from 21. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook, and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good morning.